Hello everyone. I'm back again with another chapter of class 12 using Python libraries. Now we have heard about the term called library and modules. We have seen a lot of modules from the standard Python library. That is modules like math, modules like random, modules like statistics and so on. In this chapter, we'll be talking about creating our own modules and creating our own libraries or packages. Is that clear? So that's the concentration in this chapter, not about built-in packages or uh, built-in uh, modules, but creating our own modules and packages. Okay. Now, first we need to know is what is a module or what is the purpose of a module? A module is something which allows us to organize data. Now, for example, let me talk about our cupboard. Don't we keep, you know, uh, my jeans on, uh, you know, one rack and maybe my cosmetics on the other one and maybe my, you know, uh, Indian wear on the other one. Now, why do we do that in a cupboard is to organize it so that whenever I want to pick up something, it's easy for me. So that's the whole purpose of writing a module or creating a module is to organize your Python code. Now, what basically is a module? Here I told you, why do we need a module? Now, what basically is a module? A module is nothing but a file with the .py extension. Now, you must have realized that all the programs that you wrote in class 11 had a .py extension. So can that be called a module? Yes, actually that can be called a module. But when we look about, or when we talk about a term called module, what does the module contain? It just doesn't contain some lines of coding that you have done in class 11. It basically could contain functions, it could contain classes, it could contain variables, it could contain doc strings and so on. Okay, so that is basically what I term as a module. So your regular program also had an extension .py, which you could say probably worked as a module. But normally in modules, we have functions and classes and variables defined in the module. Is that clear? Okay, now I've given you an example of a module here. I have created a module with the name called circle. So I hope you can see here, the name of my module is circle, okay? and I have given it extension .py. Only then can it become a module. Now, can you see something written here in triple quotes? Now we have learned in class 11 that common statements are written in triple quotes and the common statements that you write in triple quotes also were called a doc string. Now I'll tell you the importance of a doc string. Why doc string becomes important for a module? Then the variable that you see here, pi, is assigned a value 3.14. So this is a constant of the module named as circle. Now, what was my purpose of creating this module called circle? Now, with circle, I can do two functionalities, calculating the area of a circle or calculating the circumference of a circle. So what did I do? Both these functions, one which calculates area, and one which calculates circumference, both these functions, I stored it in a module called circle.py, which means whenever I want to you know, uh, access the functionalities of a circle, I would have to refer to the module called circle. Similarly, probably you could have a, a module called rectangle.py, which would have two functions to calculate the area and the perimeter or have another module called square.py, which also calculates the area and square, uh, perimeter of a square. So what are we doing? We're just organizing these functions into modules so it becomes easy to access it. And it's not just mixed up. So if I ever want to do the calculation of an uh, area uh, of a circle or a circumference of a circle, I definitely know that I don't have to search everywhere. I just need to be using the module called circle.py. Is that clear? And what you see here is a function. We know how to write functions. This is one function which calculates and returns the area of a circle. And you can see the formula that I have written here. Similarly, I have written one more function here. 
which calculates the circumference of a circle I, and have written the uh, formula here. Now, can you see I did not write 3.14. Instead, I wrote pi or pi because pi is already defined in the module as 3.14. Is that clear? So this is just a sample module. But remember, when I created this module, I've stored this module under the name called circle.py. And what all do you see in the module currently? A doc string, which is nothing but a comment statement, a constant, functions. It can also have classes, but your syllabus currently doesn't talk about, uh, you know, teaching you about classes. Is that clear? Okay. Now, once I have created this module, once I have created this module, how do I, you know, use this module in other parts of my program? Let me just take you there. But before that, I would want to tell you the importance of, you know, writing a doc string and all these things. After creation of the module, okay, on your Python console, okay, let me just clear my annotations. Okay, on your Python console, that's, you know, where your output area is. Okay, in some of the IDs, it looks like this. And in some of our, in spider ID, it looks like this. Okay, so if you write the word import circle, and then you write the word help circle, what will it tell me? It will tell me everything that circle has. Same thing, You've, you have, uh, you know, worked with a module called math. So if you wanted to know what are the various functions of the module called math and what each function does, you know what you could do is just write import math and then write help math. Now, when you write the word help math, this is what you're going to be seeing on the screen. It will tell you the name of the module. Now, the description tells you what the module does. And this is exactly what you wrote as the doc string. That's why I said doc string is important. So if anybody wants to know what your module does, the description that you have given for the module will say what the module does. Then if you remember, I wrote comment statements in each of those functions as well. So it, it names all the functions that I have in the module and the comment statement which says what the function does. Because an outsider, somebody who's not made this module, will definitely not know how the module works, right? So how does he learn how the module works? Is by using the help function or the help statement, and he can see everything that is present in the module. Same way, if you want to know any of the, you know, the functionalities or the various functions in a particular module that you have learned, you could have said, you could say import random and say help random. It will tell you all the functions available with random and what each function does. So that's the importance of writing a comment statement with functions and with modules. What you write with module comes under the heading called description. And the comment statements that you write with functions will be displayed right after the heading of the function. So you can exactly tell the user that this function requires one parameter and what does it do and things like that. Okay. And the last line here is telling you where is this module stored. So this module currently is stored in a folder called Ginny. That's my name. I hope you know that. And in a folder called users, which is on the root directory called the C drive. Is that clear? So see the advantage of writing comment statements. Till now we said, okay, comment statements are, you know, uh, only for documentation purpose. This is what I mean by uh, documentation purpose. Is that clear? Okay. So now let me just take you one step ahead. Is now you created the module. Now how will you access the module or how do you access those functions of those module? Now, how did we access uh, the math module? Didn't we say import math? Similarly here, if I have to access the module, I will have to say import and the name of the module, which was circle. Okay. After importing math, how did you use the SQRT and the POW functions or the other functions of the math module? Didn't you write? math.pow or math.sqrt same concept here but i will teach you some more things okay so if you want to access a module the first thing you need to do is import that particular module now in one line you can import more than one module i could say import math comma these are all built-in ones okay math comma uh, statistics comma, random, okay? So you have to first import the module. And once you import the module, how do you access the functions of the module? We already know. We write the name of the module like math dot 
the name of the function, let's say POW in bracket 2 comma 3. So similarly here, if you see, I have written circle because that's the name of my module dot area because I want to calculate the area. And in bracket area required the radius. So I'm sending the radius as 5.5. Is that clear? Okay. There are other ways of accessing a module also. Suppose you want to, uh, you know, uh, import the module, but the module name is too long or too complicated. So every time you have to write such big long names, you can give an alias names to your module by writing, like I could say import math as M. Then what happens is instead of writing math.pow, I can write m.pow. Similarly here, I've written import circle as CIR. This is not necessary. Yeah? This is if you want. Then what happens is the circle module is now given another name called CIR. And if I have to call any functions of the circle module, I can make use of CIR as you see in the example here. Okay. Now here what's happening is we are importing the entire module as it is and then that means in my current space the module name is registered that means circle is registered and circle takes me to those functions of the module but suppose i want to import only a specific function like i only i'm only talking about area right so i want to import only the function called area into my current space then what could i do i could write from math import pow or now in this example that's about the standard library from this example i will write from circle import area so now in the current workspace you have not brought in the circle name you have only brought in the name called area now if you want to call the function called area you can just call it by its name as shown in the example below you don't have to write circle dot area because you did not import the name circle into your current workspace you have imported the name called area so area is already in your current workspace so you just call it as though you're calling a function that belongs to your current workspace is that clear? Now, suppose you want to import all the functions of a particular um, module, okay? But uh, not import the module name, but only import the function names. In that scenario, you could say from circle import the asterisk sign or import star. Star would mean import all the modules. Now, suppose now in this scenario, what are the modules, sorry, uh, not import all the modules, import all the functions. Now, what are the functions present in this uh, module? You had a function called area and you had a function called circumference. Now, if you want to access them, you could just use the word area or circumference. Because remember children, we have not imported circle. From circle, we have imported. So what is coming to our current workspace or namespace is just the names of those functions. So I can directly access those functions as you see here in the last statement. Is that clear? So these were, these were the things about module. So what is a module? A module is nothing but a file with a PY extension, which generally consists of variables, functions, classes and doc string or your com comment statement is that clear that's about a module okay now what happens when you basically write the word import what happens in the background now when you say import circle where should this circle be can it be anywhere on my computer and still does the interpreter search for it no when you write the word import circle, the interpreter searches for it in specific locations. What is the specific location? It first searches for it in the current working directory. What do I mean by current working directory? If I am under a folder, if my program that I'm, where I'm using the word import circle is under a folder called sample, then it is searching where the circle is also under the folder called sample. That is what I mean by current working directory. Or it searches in all the directories that is stored in a variable called Python path variable. I will show you all this. So if your Python path variable mentions certain directories, it will also search there. Or while installing Python, what are the directories that you configured 
during the installation, it will also search there. So remember, you can't just write a module and store it anywhere if you want the interpreter to search it correctly. But I will tell you, yes, you can actually store it anywhere also and make the interpreter search there. I will let you know. So now these are the locations. These are the three locations where the interpreter will search. If you actually want to know the location, I want to know what's the current working directory or what are the directories that are stored in the Python path variable or the directories that are configured during the you know installation of python then what i could do is i could use the module called sys and in the module called sys there is a variable called path that path tells me the all the folders or all the directories or all the locations where the interpreter will search for my current module okay so if you write import sys and this is where are you writing in the console area if you write import sys and then you say print sys.path. So why sys.path? Because path is a variable of the module called sys. So when you write sys.path, what will it do? It will list you all the locations that the interpreter is actually going to be searching for a specific module. Now you realize that in that location, you have written your module somewhere else. Or somewhere else. So the interpreter is not searching in that location. You know what you could do is you could even modify the path variable. How do I modify the path variable? I could write something like this. I could write sys.path.append and then I give the location where my circle module is. Let's assume my circle module is in a folder called my files, which is under a folder called home, which is on C drive. So I want the interpreter even to search in this location and not just the three uh, you know, locations which it, which it usually does. So what could you do? You could modify the path variable of the system, sys module. It's called the system module. So path variable of the sys module could be you know, modified by writing the particular statement. So now you need not worry about, after you write this, remember, Apart from the current working directory and all the directories mentioned in the Python path variable and all the directories that was configured during Python installation, it will also search in this particular directory. Is that clear? Okay. Now this was about modules. Now what is a library? We have heard the term library. Your math module, your random module, your statistic module, they were all present in the standard library of Python. Okay. Now what is library basically? So now what is a standard library having? Can I say it's a collection of so many modules? Yes. So a package or a library is nothing but a collection of modules. So how do you create a library then? It's just like creating a folder. So you go onto your system and you create a folder and into that folder you put in all your modules. That folder becomes a package or a library. So in this example here, I have a module called circle. I have a module called rectangle. I have a module called square. Okay. And what I do is I put all this into a folder called geometry. This is further organizing it because circle, rectangle, square, all, all geometry related. So I could put all of them in a folder called geometry. Now here geometry is treated as a library or a package. So what is a package? A collection of Python modules. You might see another module there saying underscore underscore, there's underscore two times, init underscore underscore dot py. In the older versions of Python, it required that if geometry has to be identified as a module and not just a regular folder on your computer, it must have a file with this name. It may be left empty. You could do a lot of things there, but it could be left empty. But there has to be a file with this name for the computer to, or for the interpreter to identify that this is a module and not just, sorry, this is a library or a package and not just any folder on your computer. Okay, but as the versions increase, now Spider 3. Point, uh, I think 3 onwards, what they have said is even if you don't have the init.py uh, module, module in the package, it is still okay. Is that clear? Okay. Now, previously we learned a module. Okay. Now we have a module where in a package. Now, how do you access these things then? 
the first way of accessing it is you write import now where is circle module in geometry right so i will write import geometry dot circle so i am importing geometry dot circle into my current program and now let's say i want to access the area what do you say function how do i access the area function you will say geometry dot circle dot area because remember circle was a module in the package called geometry so area is a function in the package in the module called circle which is in the package called geometry so if you are importing in this style you will be calling the function also in the style that is given below if you write this from geometry import circle so that means i'm only importing the circle module from so the geometry has not come into my current namespace or workspace only circle has come to my workspace then how do i access the area function you write circle dot area because you have circle circle connects you to area so if you have to refer to area you will say circle dot area what if i write this from geometry dot circle import area in this scenario we are only importing the area function which belongs to the module called circle of the library or the package called geometry then in that ca case how do i access the elements i mean the functions uh, function area you just write the word area and the parameters required is that clear so i, I hope you got a brief understanding of what do you mean by a package what do you mean by a module and how to access now remember one thing the accessing methods that we have learned here for modules you could use it with your inbuilt like your modules like math and uh, what you say statistics and random also is that clear but in this chapter we were not talking about or concentrating on the built in modules we were concentrating on how do you create your own modules and how do you create your own packages so packages are just folders filled up with some modules but again we organize it into a package called geometry i would not uh, put in modules which is having something related to strings like you know it could confuse the user is that clear so i hope concept of a module concept of a package how do you import modules how do you import modules which are present in a package and how do you you know alter the path variable of the system uh, what do you say uh, module how path variable of the system module i have shown you so is that clear so i hope things are clear and you are uh, ready to create your own modules and packages okay thank you